Well, hello, welcome back to this week's vlog. I've been changing up my vlogs lately. You may have noticed doing some things that kind of revolve a bit more around indie artist life. And today I thought I would show you around my tiny little studio. I call it a studio. It's a workplace that I work from. It's not a recording studio, but it is a place where I write a lot of my songs. So I thought today you would like to look around and I can explain a few bits and how it all works. Ready? Yeah. Right, let's start here. A few weeks ago, I set about trying to rearrange my studio so I could make more of the space. It's a converted single garage and there's very little space in here to make it what it needs to be for me. And as time goes on, I'm aware that I have got more and more clutter in here and I need to sort it out. You may have seen a vlog I did a few weeks ago about CDs and whether to get rid of them or not. I did get rid of some. I kept some. I've kept about 30 or 25, I think 25? 25 of my old, old CDs and probably gonna give them away in packs and stuff for people who are awesome and maybe patrons and people like that. So, in case you're wondering, that's what I'm doing. So this is where I start everything. My desk, I've moved it. It was in the middle of the room. I also had it over there, but this seems like a really good place next to the wall. So let me show you. So as you can see, I have two speakers which are on loan to me at the moment. Thanks Pete for being so willing to lend them to me long term for four years or so. Um, got my old Ikea desk here and then a desktop. Amazingly, someone gave this to me. They were moving to a different country. They needed to get rid of it real fast and in exchange for a lift to the airport and helping her out with a few different bits and pieces, she basically gave me this old iMac, which was incredible because I was looking for one for ages, didn't have the money for it, didn't know how it was gonna happen and she just gave it to me. It's changed the way I work so much, so much easier to create music particularly, but also video editing as well and I'm super thankful. Managed to find a way to update it and it's working a dream for me. As you can see on the desk as well, well, I have my newest addition, which is this. It's called the JU06A. It is a combination of two Juno synths, and it sits so nicely here. It's on a dock, a keys dock, and um, loads of cool sounds. Loads of sounds that I've used on Pyramid Park projects. And for those of you who know anything about Juno synths, they were massive in the 80s. And yes, they cost well over a grand. And I don't have that kind of money spare at the moment for equipment. So I figured out this would be the next best thing to create some of my sounds live and to also inspire me to keep writing songs. Then over here, we have my oldest guitar. This is my Simon and Patrick Luthi guitar. It's my songwriting guitar, so it sits here with the radiator. I love it. I still love this guitar so much. There's a whole vlog all about that as well, my three guitars and how I like to use them. That is an awesome guitar, but it never tours with me anymore. It's simply there just for fun to pick up and play. Next to that, I have my SPDS. I played a gig probably three years ago where we really needed to strip down the set and I knew that I needed to basically grab an SPDS. My drummer didn't have one and I figured it would be a good investment for the future of touring. It's awesome, loads of drummers use it. It's great for not just great sample sounds and being able to use the exact sample that's on the Pyramid Park tracks, particularly on the Vulnerability album where there was quite a lot of drum sampling going on. This is a beast. And we sometimes double up the kick on this as well. And for some tracks we have a live kick drum and then we have a kick drum on this as well to give extra kind of depth to the kind of feel and vibe. If you look closely, you can see there's a stop back, play and forward buttons and I've set this up to run tracks so that when we're playing live there's a track going on sometimes that is running click and vocal cues where needed sometimes just to remind ourselves where we are on the song. Songs like Caught in the Depths for example where there's an instrumental thing going on before the bridge and sometimes you can get lost in it if you don't count it quite right. So things that are just super clear so we know exactly where we are and we're not singing random parts at the wrong time which has happened before. 
So this cues up the tracks and it stops it and it plays the next one if you want to or goes back to the track that we were using. That is so helpful in a live setting, particularly for Matt playing drums because it means that he isn't then having to figure out the laptop with his finger, getting onto the right place and then playing one-handed or not at all, which has happened as well live. So trying to minimize issues and problems. Let me take you to under the desk. This feels really weird filming under my desk, but I've tried to make the most of space in this room. And so under this desk, there's loads of space. So over here, we have got a heat press. This was when I was super excited about doing screen printing. It didn't quite work out as well as I thought. So I've got a heat press here now. Probably will use it in the future for something kind of good thing to have for merch and stuff. And then down here, you can see my pedal board. I plugged it in. I've plugged it in but as you can see most of it is not properly cabled in. I just try to fit as many pedals on there as possible. I haven't used it for a while and I've done a whole vlog on some of my pedals if you want to check that out as well. Four pedals I used to create the Pyramid Park sound or something like that. Um, so this is awesome. I will just point out one in particular that I love using for PP stuff. It is the Whammy. Um, old school. Awesome pedal. Really fun to use use it in stacks of stuff. Still on my knees over here because on the other side of the desk as you can see down here I have a vocal processor which I've used for live stuff before some cables just space to put cables and then round here there's a load of stuff for tools I have some random tools like I have like this piercing thing where you can make holes in stuff and yeah cable cutters, all sorts of things. So they will go under there. Drawer full of stuff, like a thesaurus, really handy for writing. And I'm old school, I still like looking at stuff on paper. And we get round to the amp section here. One thing that I would really like to buy at some stage in the kind of mid-term future is a Kemper profiler rack. I feel I need more control on my tone and I know loads of people who've got Kempers swear by them, think they're awesome. Costs a fair whack but well worth it and I'd love to be able to just program everything in. So I'm thinking if I get one eventually I'll probably put it just under that printer there that's kind of sitting there um, on a rack so that I can just pull it out when I need it for live stuff but also use it for a lot of studio stuff, for recording demos and for any live streams as well. As you can see in this corner there's a tiny mixing desk that just makes sure that I have more inputs for my audio interface. I've got a really small audio interface as you probably saw that may get updated at some point but it doesn't need to be right now because I've got this mixer and that's super handy. And then below that hopefully you can see my two amps, my Fender Junior amp which is loud as it's crazy loud. It's so so loud like you put it on 1.5 and it's pretty much blowing your head off. So. That's another reason why in this room, I don't want to be using it that much. I'll still keep it for stuff, but won't be using it a lot in here. It's great, but it's loud and um, it's getting a bit old. And then below that is my oldest purchase of music gear outside of guitar amps. Bought it a long time ago and it's acoustic amp, which I still use for house gigs, where you can plug in a mic and a guitar and it gives you like a kind of mini PA system kind of setup. And if you want more inputs, I just take the mixer with me and that gives me more inputs. Moving along from the amps, we go to my Moog Sub Fatty. This was bought around the same time as the SPDS because I needed a bass synth for live, particularly when my bass player couldn't make it and we had a Dep coming in who didn't play Moog or just needed it for creative stuff and needed it in the studio for recording like bass synth on the whole of the Not An Island album. This is just an awesome bit of kit. Love it so much. It's just like, it's monophonic, so you can't play like two notes at once. You just play one or the other, um, which is great for my standard of play. And so many effects and knobs. I won't go into it now, but I use it so much. I think we tracked it on most songs on Not An Island, the album, and on the recent project as well, Anomaly, the EP. I just love it. I think it's awesome. So much fun. Then I've got a MIDI keyboard next to it, which isn't plugged in at the moment. Vulnerability Vinyl. The next 
bit that I'm going to show you is one of the reasons why I wanted to change my studio around. In this corner I've tried to create a backup space. Because I travel around quite a lot I have most of my stuff on my hard drive then backups on my desktop over there but it does slow it down quite significantly and I don't want to keep slowing that machine down because I need it every day for stuff. So I want to put all my backups on another hard drive but kind of somewhere that I could access it really easily which wasn't going to be another external hard drive. So amazingly somebody gave me their 2011 desktop. All I needed to do was provide a screen and all the other little bits and pieces which thankfully my wife isn't working at the moment so I've nicked her work screen and I just dump all the important files like all the audio, all the important videos onto this. Onto this bad boy. I'm not using it for anything else but storage so Maybe I should be, I probably need to put some more memory in it. Got my guitar out at the moment. And that is pretty much it. I did forget one thing. I set up my Shure SMB mic here. Bought this mic at the beginning of lockdown. I've been borrowing one from my church for ages. Thanks Josh for letting me use it so many times. Figured I needed to get my own sometime and stop borrowing stuff from other people. Awesome mic, I love it so much. It's been crazy good for me. And then round here. Here's another view of the studio. So you can kind of see the desk behind me and all the bits of equipment laid out and ready to go for creating. If I just show you down here, that's where I store my hoodies. Hoodies, guitar cases, beautiful J45 in there. And then round the corner is where I store all my packaging. So vinyl down there, new t-shirts, looking amazing, ready for you guys more and more CDs and stuff, old t-shirts. If I move my lights, you can see them, they're just snuck there, that's where all the old ones go. And then round here, a bit more packaging. This guy, old keyboard I need to return, more packaging, and the yellow chair. I hope that gives you a good idea of the studio setup. As always, there are things I'd love to improve, but this is kind of my DIY setup as an artist. There are studios that I use for proper recording. There are studios I use for rehearsing. And you know what? This is a great starting point for me. This is what I need. I feel I've got all the inspiration I need in this room. And of course, I'd always love more gear, but it's a great spot to have my stuff in one place. If you've got any questions or comments, please let me know. I love hearing from you. I also love to know what content you want from me. So if there's any suggestions for content, drop me a message and I will get back to you. I try and reply to everything. It's awesome to hear from you. So please do that. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to this channel. Like the video if you've enjoyed the content. And finally, check out my YouTube members program. It's a way for you guys to get more access from me behind the scenes, stuff you wouldn't hear on socials or anywhere else from me and you get all my material before anyone else gets it, demos and all sorts of other stuff. So go check that out if that's of interest to you. It also helps me to keep running this channel and make it possible to continue to work as an indie artist. Thanks so much everyone. Take care. See you soon. Bye.